two are bad friends. Who are these two idiots? A white dude and an Asian dude. You two are disgusting. Well, you two are something. We're bad friends. I went to fucking Houston, and he was an MC. Yeah. And he doesn't even introduce himself to me. He just goes, he's a Mexican guy, and he goes, hey, bro. I go, yeah, he goes, I'm the number one comic in Texas. <laughs> That's his opening line. It's a big state. So I go, it's pretty big. And he goes, I won, you know, funniest man in Texas or whatever. Some oh, he won funniest man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So I go, okay. And he goes, and then this is the, what drives me crazy. When yeah. an MC says this, dude, I don't even know what I'm doing here, dude. I'm a headliner. Oh, bro. That's what, what an said. annoying state. Or to they me. go, I usually headline. Yeah, I do. Go, I don't well, know what I'm doing. I why are you not headline. headlining right yeah, now? Yeah. And I am. So I go, okay. So then he goes up and he does a 15 minute bit about fucking old ladies as an MC. That's my, I do that. I know. That's your closer. That's my biggest that's closer. That's your closer. I go, Gladys, <laughs> get over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready to give you a gummy. <laughs> and so I go, um, after the show, I, I just go, dude. You, because I had a fee at Sarah Tiana or somebody feature. Love, love her. Right. So, and she's, she's pretty best. clean, you know. She's she's she kind of was like super clean. She was just kind of like I don't want to follow that. So I go, dude, hey, bro, you know, in the way, <laughs> you know, it's a or whatever. I go, you gotta, you can't, you gotta clean it up. Yeah. He goes, what, dude? I'm a headliner, bro. I'm I, go, I know, I don't give a shit. fuck. You gotta be. So then he second show, he doubles down. Yeah, because you yeah exactly. What you so told him doubles, not to do. Of he course, does, he's he gonna fucking do it. Doubles down. Yeah, and he does a bit about like, you know, f- foot fucking midgets. That's my other bit. <laughs> I know that's your alternative closer. <laughs> this guy taking yeah, my bit. That's your opener. Uh, yeah, foot yeah. fucking midgets. By the way, that is a funny concept. I don't even know the bit, but it sounds yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> he literally gets up stage and look him yeah. right in the eyes and go, "You're fired." Oh, you fired him on the spot. Yeah. Did he try to fight you? He goes, you can't do that. I, I just did. I just called um, Raymond. You're gone. I just called, and I can go even higher. Yeah. You're done, dude. Bye. Bye. Can I, can I say something? What? Two things. One, uh, happy uh, 4th of July. I hope everyone had a great 4th of July weekend. Oh! oh. I hope everyone partied. Bobby set off fireworks. Hey! hey. Um... <laughs> And Bobby lied to me. Bobby said that he was in Joshua Tree and it caused a panic. I said, hey, dude, we're, we're recording today. Well, and you, you said, want to be honest? I called you and I said, hey, dude, I rented an Airbnb in Joshua Tree and I completely forgot about it. And then you go, you're fucking kidding, right? You're fucking kidding. I go, no, dude. And then you go, no, you, 3, 3.30, you got to be here. And I go, um, I'm not going to make it. You go, and then you, you 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 got you got boily. Be real, what you did. You're not being honest about what you did. Hmm. You're. I, I'm a good tell if someone is bullshitting me. You are not that good of an actor, and you sold it better than I've ever hear, heard you sold, sell anything. Why? Be- because, because I wasn't got, in the disaster artist. Be- <laughs> <laughs> is that why? Uh, is that wh- why? Is that why? Watch the I- new game show with Rob Gunkrowski and Robbie Ree. Wacka, wacka, wacka. Don't make fun of my projects. I won't make fun of your projects. You okay? just made fun of my acting skills. It's, you're not that good of an actor. So what I'm saying is... <laughs> <laughs> no, but listen. Listen. Yeah. You got emotional on the phone and it, you suck. I suck. I bought into it. I know you did. You said, you go, the whole, the whole family's up here and, and Jules and, and, and the animals. And, and then I got worried. I go, fuck, they did. Maybe he took the whole family and they needed yeah. to go. Get, so you suckered me with emotion. I know. I was not believing it until you got emotional. Well, that's called acting. That's not good acting. You got, you got suckered into it. But I couldn't see you. I could only hear you. It doesn't you. matter. That's how good I am. You're a good voice actor. You're a good voice actor. You'd be a great voice actor. In fact, there's new slots opening up in Hollywood that white people took of, of non-white roles. Bro, I'm on, I'm on a, first of all, Number one, you fucking cocksucker. That's a show? Number one, no, 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 you fucking no. cocksucker? I'm on a Netflix show coming out that I'm a regular on. It's What's a, it called? It's called Inside Job. With oh. Mike, uh, Dirty Jobs, the no. spinoff with Mike Rowe? No, no. What is it about? It's a bunch of, bunch of scientists that work for um, the government, but we're like a, any, I don't want to get into it because it's not out yet. Because you don't know what it is? I do know what it is. Okay. And number two, um, I'm in a Sony um, movie with, called, um, Wish Dragon with Jackie Chan, me, John Cho, and I'm one of like the leads. It's a voiceover movie coming out. Uh-huh. Well, you are. So, and I've also done 
you know what I mean? I was on The Awesomes, which was a fucking Hulu. Uh, so fuck you, dude. I said you're a good voice actor. I, just I can do you, everything. No, you can't do everything. Yeah, you, yeah. you can't dance. You're not a triple threat. You can't sing or dance. You can act, but you can't sing or dance. Period. People like the um, uh, Daddy Why You Die song. That was because of me. <laughs> So you lied to me about going to Airbnb, yeah. and I almost, I, I almost wanted to text Kalila to be like, "Is this fucking real?" Because it, you got me that much that I was like, "Fuck, man, are you guys really going yeah. to the fucking desert?" Yeah, and, and then I don't. You even are, know why. A, you are a great actor. Uh, fuck you. No, no, you and actually. I don't are. give a fuck. I don't believe you. I'll never believe you now. I'll never believe you. And also, I'm doing you a fucking favor by being here right now. Okay, so you're doing me a favor because I we came in on an off day. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Bobby. Yeah. You're so sweet. I'm sorry to interrupt your uh, uh, jerk-off video game sleep troll really? schedule. Yeah, you booger. That's a booger. You're a booger. Why, because I'm yellow and slimy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a, you, yes. you're a fucking. This is my month. You're a good guy. Thank you. This you really, is my month. You have month. a good heart, you have a good guy. This is my month. This was, this was my celebratory weekend. This is the four, This is the independence of the United States of America, pal. You know, do you even know what the 4th of July yes, is about? Yes, I do know what What's the 4th of July What's it about? It's about when Magellan came here and the Nosotros de Franco, the boat. <laughs> no. Yes, let me no. finish. They came here from the Nosotros de Franco boat, right? And they hit Plymouth Rock. They didn't hit they, it. Let me finish, right? Yeah. And then the, the, the Susan Marie boat, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. With the other guy, Colombo. Yes. Right? They did. <laughs> they did. And they came here, dude, and they fucking gave the Indians the blankets. Yeah, to keep them warm. Right, and then Washington D came. Yep. Right, Washington D came, dude. Yeah. It became our first president, dude. That's and exactly And they signed right. the Proclamation of Independence, dude. They signed a Proclamation of Independence. That's right. And that's what happened. Thank you so much. Rude, Move you, over, Rude, Chris Rude, D from fucking Rude, hyena. Do you know history of hyena? Do you know what Fourth of July is? What it means? Um, I just know that um, the colonies were fighting the British. Parliament and then they won. So knows more than you. Literally knows more than you. Yeah. Not born here knows more than you. Literally knows more than you. Mm. I honestly believe you don't really know what it's about. I don't. Why do we set off fireworks? Do you know what? Do you know why we set off no, fireworks? I have no idea. I have no idea. And you know what you're doing? You're, what you're doing right now? And this is in your nature. I'm trying to revoke your and green this card. Is in your heart. I'm trying to get you out of this country, no, no, pal. No. no. Why don't you go back to where you came from? That you like to put people in shame. No, not you. I, and you like I, to call, you like to cause trauma. I want Rudy to like outshine to you because of how mean you are to her. Sometimes I want her to clap back at you a little. I'm bit. so good to her at home. Not am I not? Am I not good to you at home? I'm so good to her at home. Wait, I, can I show something of Rudy? I got sent this. This is so fun. Look at this. Who is that, <laughs> Bobby? Who is that? Do you know who that is? Well, that guy shows up every once in a while in my house. I think he's like either the gardener or who is this guy? He, he is sometimes ends up in the. I sometimes see him in the garage. So this is a member. This is a, the newest member of yeah, yeah. of the Lee household. Yes. Uh, people at home. Ramon. Uh, this is Ramon. Ramon. We want you to meet Ramon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ramon Valdez. <laughs> yeah, Ramon Valdez. He's how old is he? He's about eighteen. Eighteen or, or 19? nineteen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he works with you guys. He does work. He mis just mysteriously appears, kind of like a you know a sorcerer. He po he just pops up. And but goes then it's weird. I never see him and and um, Rudy in the same room ever at the same time. Rudy, do you know Ramon? Do you know Ramon well? <laughs> Have you ever met him? No. <laughs> no, you've never met Ramon. Yeah. He's a really nice kid. Apparently, he works. Kalila was saying he, uh, he he's he's handy around the house. He fixes stuff. He does fix stuff. He's yeah, very yeah, nice. Yeah. He's very sweet. He loves to make eggs for some reason. He's a big egg guy. He's a big egg guy. Yeah, why? And he feeds the dogs, which is great. But he likes his eggs soft scramble, yeah, which yeah. is really annoying. Yeah. yeah, that's uh that's the new member Ramon. That's Ramon. And Ramon's girlfriend, we have a picture of his girlfriend. This is his girlfriend here. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. That's Susie. This is Susie. Susie Lee. This is Susie Lee. Yeah, and she um I don't remember her. She, so I know Susie very well. People say that she wanders around the house, right? But yeah. I don't really recall. I don't ever see her. You don't. You, they say that she's yeah. No, she she this this. She's the aunt of Ramon. Oh, this is Ramon's yes, aunt. She's the Ramon Ramon's aunt. Can I tell you something about her? Yeah. Very cute. She has one of those little fat faces. You know those little <laughs> cute little fat faces. Yeah, yeah. And she's got um very nice pudgy little cheeks. Uh -huh. I just want to pinch her cute yeah, little cheeks. Yeah. Mind you, she's 50. <laughs> she is 50. She is 50 years old. Yeah. But she looks really good. Very tight vagina, though. Uh, really? 
<laughs> yes. Wow. Yes. And uh, one more family member that's added to the new Bad Friends um, yeah. household. Yeah. Um, this, uh, this, ladies and gentlemen, is, I'll tell you. This is Sheila. Here's oh, Sheila. Oh, there's Sheila. She's friends with she's friends with Susie. Yeah, Sheila is good they buds. They hang with, out. They, yeah, they, they argue a lot. It. Now you can just tell by looking at this that she is a bitch. There's no doubt yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She is an awful bitch. You know the first thing that comes out of her mouth? What? I said no tomatoes. <laughs> Yeah, she's yeah. she gets so mad at customer service. She's not a nice person. Yeah, there she um, is. She, for some reason, she she really does have a hard time uh, just keeping it together, and it could be this fiery red hair. Okay, so let's let, uh, let's be honest now. Okie dokie. This is a face app. Everybody knows. And this is you. This is and let me. me. I'm gonna. And honestly, if I was single, would I fuck that girl? <gasps> would you? Be real. Yeah. You would? I think so. Really? Yeah. Do you think she's cute? She, I wouldn't date her. No. I wouldn't date her. No, 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 no. But you, if I was in, you know what I mean, yeah. Dayton, Dayton, Ohio, playing it's, the funny bone or whatever. And I and I should come up to the show and I'm like, hey, I really loved your performance. You're so funny. Yeah, I'd just be like, yeah, open your mouth. And oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sheila, so, okay, Sheila, is she, what do you think, Root? Is Sheila gross? Um, she looks intimidating. She looks yeah, intimidating. Yeah. Who's cuter, Sheila or Susie? Let's side by side it. Who's cuter? I like Susie. You, you like, like Susie? Susie. You like Susie. That's because yeah. you're racist. No, um, let me ask you something. Yeah. If you were single, yeah. would you hook up with Susie? If I was single, okay, let me be honest. Susie, be honest. Susie looks like, okay, her face, this is not about you. <laughs> she looks like she drinks and smokes a little bit too much. She looks like she's been, she's weathered a few storms. And I bet you she'd, ha she'd have a fun couple of late night clubs to go to. So yeah, I might take Susie out. Am I going to call her again? No, no chance. No, no, no. no. The same with Sheila. Susie looks like you. These are one night standers. We are one as a women. We're these are one night stand women. You know that old racist term that uh, that Vietnam vets say two dollars. I know all of them. Fucky. Yeah, two dollar fucky fucky. Two dollar fucky fucky. This yeah. is a dollar thirty. <laughs> <laughs> She's a dollar thirty fucky fucky. How much am I? I mean, I'm sorry. How much is Sheila? Sheila is. <laughs> Sheila looks like a fucking eighty dollar Vegas girl. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that makes me feel good. Yeah, I'm a dollar thirty five. But you know what? <laughs> but you know what's funny when the makeup comes off for both of these girls. I know. <laughs> right. Yeah, not good looking. And Ramon, by the way, Ramon. Ramon let's be real. Ra yeah. Is sexy as shit. Ramon knows jujitsu. It looks like. To, uh, uh, Krav Maga. Yeah. A big Krav Maga pretty, guy. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah. he is actually super good looking. I'm yeah. not kidding. I, I like, uh, he is, but yeah. I've shown this to a few friends that uh, listen to the show. Yeah. And they didn't know who it was. I know. It's so, yeah. It's really. It doesn't look like doesn't you, Rudy. It doesn't look like you. Rudy, all, Rudy, it doesn't look like you. It's so strange. When we did the face app, we all collapsed on the ground and we laughed hysterically. <laughs> it's, it, well. Because it's so good. And then you saw, and then here's, Kalila sent me hers. I have hers in here. Where is it? Yeah. No, I've, oh my God. I have Kenny? to send it to Where's myself. Kenny? Where is Kenny? Where is Kenny? I have to find, do you have it? I have to find it. I think it. I have Kenny. I have it. But the, you know what the funny thing is about the face app is I didn't I think have a that couple of versions of Kenny. Oh, uh, you do? Yeah. <laughs> that looks like a dude I used to party with. <laughs> yeah. What's up? What's up, bro? Post the one. Just post the one I just sent you. Uh huh. This is this is a different kid. This is a different version of this Kenny. Is, so this is this is version. This is, no no facial hair, Kenny. This is Kenny. Yeah. This is serial ki <laughs> this is serial killer. Oh yeah. My incel serial killer. Well, Kenny. How, why? So why does this one look so different? That's what's so unique about the app. Yeah, yeah. Is that you? This this Kenny. Yeah. Doesn't look anything. Like this, Kenny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, so. I know this guy. Yeah. This guy, I know this guy. I he know does, left Kenny. He, yeah, yeah. Right, Kenny? Yeah, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> he, he, yeah he, 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 goes, he only goes to Tony Hinchcliffe shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the right. The left looks like he goes to that Tom Segura show. This guy on the left seems like he, the guy with the beard seems like he's he's just trying to be a bro yeah, a little yeah. bit too much. But the guy on the right, he's he the guy. He's a huge Brian Redband fan. <laughs> He stands outside of the comedy store and smokes cigarettes. I know. And he waits to say one thing to you as you go uh, goodbye, and he's been practicing over and over. Uh, yeah, yeah. But the only thing that comes out, he's like, Carl <laughs> Yeah, I know. You're like, are you okay? You, you, you get those a lot. Yeah, at let's the store. Get You get a lot well, of those. Because they get like, so fucking drunk. I know. By the way, that's sad news. The store opened, and now they're closed again. I know. Because you know the bars are officially closed again. The worst is when you get off stage and somebody goes, good set, right? Thanks. But you hadn't gone up yet. Ah, uh, her, yeah. 
Well, they just mean they like your stuff from no, before. No, no, no. I've see, I've heard guys. Yeah. Those there's a lot of hanger-ons at the comedy store. Sure. And say they say shit just that really just irritates me. That's why I love what Sebastian Maniscalco does. He just leaves. Not he, he doesn't even. We don't even know he's there. Yeah, he ghosts his way in. You know he has a separate entrance. You know that, right? He I know. I love that. I know what that. I know his route is. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't right? have to even yeah. see anybody. He. Uh... But that's because he wants to go home to his family too. He has a, he has young children. I think he just wants to not. Uh, uh, get into a conversation where someone goes, dude, can I? And he just doesn't have to, he gets to avoid all that shit. Yeah. I went to a bar last night. Which one? Went to the comedy store? No, no, no. I wanted to go to the comedy store. Uh huh. I want, I want to go and support, and now you can't go anymore. But I really did, I really made me like heartbroken that they opened that bar for the patio, and you're like, oh, God, we can't even go in there. No, I went to just like a neighborhood bar just to have a drink to get out of the house. Did you wear a mask? No, yes, dude. You have to. You're you can't even walk inside. And then so you, well, how did you drink? You took the mask down. You just pour it on your face. No, no. no. What, how do you do it? You 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 lift it and you drink. And yeah, you, you put, put the it mask. Back on. So what you do is. I wish I would have known that. When you go to the bar, you have to put a mask on. Mm -hmm. You order, and then when you go outside to the patio to a, like a beer garden where tables are. Well, they have to ask you for your ID. So then you had to take your. Go they don't your have to ask my ID. Look at my fucking face. I look like I'm a oh, hundred years yeah, old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look like Charleston. I'm Heston. old. Yeah. Charleston Heston. Yeah. You look like a Charleston Chew. You look like a used candy bar that someone okay. chewed up and then spit out. It's fucking rude. I Charleston Heston is a very, very good actor, a very handsome man. He's dead, and he and he's well. No, the image that we have of him is not that he was handsome. You see, like you're thinking about old Charleston Heston. That's why you made the joke. No, I meant you know the attitude of like, take the gun from my hands of my old dead body. What did from he say? From my cold dead hands. Yeah, yeah, that's what he said. That's where you'll get this gun. So. Well, I I am like Charleston Heston. I'm a I'm a I'm a proud multiple gun owner. And when I say I own, I own guns, yeah, I own machine guns. Mm -hmm. Handguns are for bitches. Mm -hmm. I own I own the big ones. Yeah, yeah. Come over. I fucking own. Come over and say the wrong thing. Bazookas. Wouldn't you love to have a bazooka? By the way, mm -hmm. I, that's the problem. I would. Sh that's why An RPG. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what would you shoot? I would shoot um just off the top of my head. Crows. Crows? <laughs> yeah, out of just resentment. No, I would probably shoot... Um, like, if you could go to the top of the Hollywood sign and you could shoot it at something, where would you uh, shoot it? I would it? aim it at um, probably toward Brentwood. Why? <laughs> just I know I'll hit somebody I don't like. <laughs> you know? what, well, it might hit a Bel Air on the way over, so that There's a, also could help. There's a couple of yeah, people there that don't help like you too. as well, yeah. <laughs> but, so we were going to say you went to the bar and then what? No, I went to the bar... I had a couple of drinks, mm -hmm. okay, and Wait, then did you go with um, I go with, I your went, wife. Uh, no, I went with uh, um, Sheila. What was Sheila? Okay, okay. <laughs> you know, with, with, okay, so you and Sheila went Me out. Me and though. Sheila went out, and two fiery redheads don't enter a bar without making a scene. Did you um, no, I had run couple, into anybody you knew? N yes, who, yes. Who, that's what who? that's what I'm trying to say. No, someone you don't know. Someone that actually cuts up clips. Uh, uh, that works at a company that we've both worked with before, off air, I'll tell you, that cuts up stand-up clips. It was so crazy. I ran into him and his wife, and we said hi, and it was so funny. It was like, you can't really, you know, it's like you can't, like, you can't hug him, you can't say hello, you can't really talk about much. Yeah. You just be like, hey, and then, you know, you kind of have a little bit of conversation, but you're afraid of, like, I don't want, I don't know. It's weird. It was It was weird. It, it was not even enjoyable. That's what the bummer was. Like, we had a little bit of fun, but... The whole time in your head, you're like, should I not be here? Is this wrong? Am I, is this stupid? I mean, it's open and I'm nowhere near anybody. Mm. We're sitting at, you know, you're like outside having a beer by yourself. Yeah, you know, this whole thing, I, I just, I don't know where to stand with it. It's like, um, it's either, mm. you know, you have those, it's because it's so politicized that you have those that say, I'll never wear a mask. It's against my, you know, yeah. constitutional rights to be I, free or whatever. And yeah. then you have ones that are super paranoid like we are, you know. But we as in you guys, yeah, like my my girlfriend. I'm not I, super paranoid, but it's it's it is a thing that's in my head. It's in my head, but you know, it's not going to go away until we get a fucking vaccination. Vaccination. Yeah. Rudy, are you scared? She's um, one of the most scared people I've ever. I'm ever just met. careful. That's so smart. No, what a not. smart phrase. You're not just careful. You're scared. Are, and she just said she's not scared because she won't even let me go get. If it, let, let me say something. If I when we go back right now, but that's because Kalila has told it, her not to let you wander. I can't go to a Starbucks. Here's why, though. You're a little... I said it before. You're a wild card. You wander. You may end up somewhere that you don't belong. I just got a test. I just got a test back. COVID test. Did I not? It came negative. I know. And I've been doing my own shit. 
I know, but but she know Kalila knows that if Rudy lets you get a, get away with whatever, that you're gonna you'll wander. You know what if you start talking to a squirrel? What am I like a Ronin or a fucking hobo? Yeah, I, you I, are. I, I'm you're not like a little hobo. Want, what do you mean wander? Little hobo bobo with your little satchel. You might walk on the I'm train. I'm gonna go there. I'm yeah. not. No, I have in. I have specific goals in mind when I go out. Ship station. As folks adapt to this changing world, we're all going to be buying more stuff online than yep. ever before. If you're an e-commerce seller, are you ready to meet the demands of our new delivery culture? Be ready with ShipStation. ShipStation's incredible, man. We are going to use ShipStation when we start making some Bay French merch. It's the fastest and easiest and most affordable way to manage all your shipping orders. Uh, a few clicks from your home, you'll be managing everything, printing out labels. It's so simple. It's so easy. And they work with... USPS, FedEx, Amazon Fulfillment. It's its a no-brainer if you're working from home and shipping stuff from your house. It's probably the simplest thing you can do, and it'll save you a bunch of money. It's also a simple interface. If you're selling like Amazon, Etsy, your own website, ShipStation brings all your orders into in, one. To yeah, one. it's very simple to do yeah. from your house. Uh, right now, Bad Friends listeners can try ShipStation for free for 60 days when you use our offer code. Bad Friends. Make sure your business is ready. We to use ShipStation in our own personal business here. Yeah, no, we do. Yeah, we do yeah, use it. We're trying yeah. to we're trying to get our merch together That's so we can use it. ShipStation.com the enter and enter offer code Bad Friends. That's ShipStation.com offer code Bad Friends. Make ship happen. happen. Tushy. Tushy. Let me ask you a question, Andrew. Yeah. How do you think my asshole's so clean? Uh, I don't really know. Because I use Tushy. Oh, you do. I do. It cleans everything, man. I don't even sometimes use toilet paper. So we have a Tushy at our home, and we have one here, here at the at Bad Friends studio, yeah. and it is so nice. I got to tell you, toilet paper is overrated. Overrated, man. Dude, Tushy's so great. It is... Uh, it's for years bidets have been uh, expensive and people don't know anything about them and they're too French or foreign uh, and you're wasting a lot of money for and, no and reason Tushy, Tushy to me is so a fucking affordable man it's like for $79 yeah. you get a full blown bidet, bidet at in your, your house. fucking house yeah it's you don't you don't have to fly all the way it's to so Japan it's so easy because I set mine up you know how dumb I am right yes Really dumb. Yeah, no, I know. And I set up my own tushy in my own house. It's so easy. Yeah, it to is set easy up. to put together. Yeah. It, it's embarrassing if you don't know how to put it together because it's simply laid out for you. Get rid of all the paper products in your house because you don't need them clogging up your toilet, costing thousands of dollars in pipe repairs and all that. And tushy and every Hello Tushy um, attachment comes with a sixty day risk free guarantee and a twelve month warranty. A whole year. A whole year. Join millions of happy Hello Tushy customers right now have a clean butt with every flush. Go to hellotushy.com slash badfriends to get 10% off. That's hellotushy.com slash badfriends. Bad friends. I go, I, I want to get Panda Express or I want to go to Trader Joe's and get, you know I mean, my items. Yeah. But I don't wonder, like I don't go, I'm going to go to Trader Joe's, oh, Sephora. Yeah, but you love Sephora. Why don't I know, you but I go love in? Sephora, but I wouldn't go, <laughs> you know what I mean? I want to buy a hammer, <laughs> right? No, I go to fucking Trader Joe's. I know. I have. I, I trust me. I know. Yeah. I'm so I, you know, all I want to tell uh, these ladies in the house is, is that I want to go here. Just let them go. But they won't let me go because they're scared. Right. Okay. Isn't that fine though? You occupy. Then you should move out. You want to move in with me? No. Do you want to live in my house? No. Look at me. You want to live with I me? I do. You can come live with me. I, I I already told you before that um, I just find the energy of your house to be a little stale for me, and and and, and it's restrictive. It's Is it because like, there's not crow shit all over the no, front of my house? That, do you want me to have crow shit and ninety animals you, running around? Why do you get defensive? Because you when make fun of me. I'm, I'm not make making fun of, fun of you. My house is stale energy. Not stale energy. I'm just trying to get. You know, I don't know much about words, right? Oh, so yeah. I make, so I make things up I and know. I try to get to the. So let me just get to what I'm trying to get to. Here's what my house feels like to you. It feels clean and organized. No, it seems <laughs> sterile, office-like. It is an office. It functions as my home office as well. No, even in the living room, it's like the walls are gray. Or That's where I work. Like, you know what I mean? First of all, it's blue. So you're not good with color. Are you colorblind? See, you're, you're attacking me again. You're attacking There's my house! It's a beautiful house! Then end it there! No! There's candles around. Is that bad? Is candles bad? Candles are fuck. Everybody likes candles. Uh, let me just get to the point. Did it smell good when you walked in? Delicious. Yeah, so fucking, come on. But then I went to the table, and there's like not a mark on it. Yeah, my table's in good condition. Yeah, no, but there's not even a mark. There's not even like a stain or a thing. It's like, 
All the chairs are pushed in. You know what I mean? All the placemats are perfect. It's like the fucking a showroom in Ikea. Is this a Twilight Zone? It's not a Twilight Zone. It, there's something weird. Whenever I go to a place and things are perfect and things are in place, yeah. something bad's about to go down. And what happened? We ordered steak and we had a nice night. And then you yeah. left saying, this luckily, was really nice. I, luckily, I w- it came fucking... Well, came away from it with no consequences. It's because the dungeon master was out of town. But if he was in town, you would have been in the garage There's in a heartbeat. There's just something weird going on in the house. So, no, I don't want to live there. You're, that's so mean. It's and not you know, being mean. And you I know just... what? Well, you know why my stuff is all nice? Why? Because unlike you, unlike you, my mommy and daddy didn't let me get away with everything. If we fucked up something, we would have gotten in trouble for it. You got to run amok and fuck up shit. Bobby, don't do that. And you got to do it. And then they're like, Bobby. And that's it. I couldn't get away with fucking up shit. If I nick the table or dented it up or bumped it up, then I get in trouble. You're a little run around loose goose doing mm. whatever you want to do, fucking up everything and ruining really? stuff. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. You have no idea the way I was raised. Mommy and daddy let you the do whatever you want. The reason why I'm like the way I am yeah. is because I lived in a fucking sweatshop. What did you make? No, it's not that. It's just like every day I was either getting beat yeah. or molested or something. And yeah, I but, but do Just here, all right? And- my house was so clean, like your house. That's why you don't like it. Just let me finish. Yeah. Okay? And everything was so restrictive, and you couldn't go to certain rooms at certain times, and, mm-hmm. and this and that, that when I left that house, yeah. I went the polar opposite. I w- immediately bought a gaming console. I, mis- I, got, I ate a pizza in my new place, the apartment I, first apartment. I, I ate half a pizza. I just threw it on the ground and left it there for two weeks. That's disgusting. No, it's not. I had to. I had to get it out. You had to cleanse it. I had to express myself I and be like a real human. Because yours comes from trauma, but my no, orga- comes my from, organization comes from my my. It comes from Stepford Wives bullshit. That I like it neat it's and clean. It's conditioned. It's taught by whom? The, by the military. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> There's something about you that's very militarized. My dad had a military dad. Yeah, and you're very like clean cut and, I, you know. St- Get in line. You know what I mean? <laughs> and this is the way it's supposed to be. Whereas I'm what they call F R E E free. Oh, you're free. I'm free as a bird, baby. Are you? Yeah. You're free as a bird. So when I went to your place, I love everyone in the house. Yeah. I love your little doggy. <laughs> Thank you. Right? Almost too perfect. Well, we... I sit down. What, what dog? What dog? Uh. What kind of dog does this? An Asian guy yeah. walks – when an Asian guy walks into any house, mm-hmm. the dog should be a little suspicious. But we've trained her well. No. She's also black. He's dumb. She's black. She is black. She's black. She's an East Which L.A. dog. Weird. Pantera. That's her name. So as an Asian guy walks into a house, this dog's never seen this Asian guy. Mm-hmm. He, the Asian guy sits on the couch. What does this mysterious dog do? What does she do? She sits right next to me, mm-hmm. looks at me with googly eyes. Sticks his tongue out and goes, pet me. Yeah. Right? And I, I want to look down and it's like, I'm the, you're lucky that this is the type that came in. <laughs> because, you know what I mean? Chong Chong from fucking, you know what I mean? You're the first Asian we've let into the house. We only let in white and black people and mm. we don't let in Asians. You're the first one. I also knew that too. No, I no. felt an energy. Actually, that's not true. Yeah, Kalila's yeah. been to my house before you came to my house. Oh, when you guys tried to rat me out. Mm-hmm. When I was relapsing on drugs, you guys tried to double team me. We didn't double team you. First of all, when she came over for Halloween when they were on the way to another party, and uh, we talked about you because she was worried about you. You guys were so – you know it's so funny? The reason why the reason why I got sober yeah. and all this came down was because of you. I know. Did you know that? Yeah. Have we talked about that? Not on the show. Yeah. You're the reason why I'm sober now. That makes me smile, actually. No, it was sabotage. It wasn't sabotage. Uh, in retrospect, it was a blessing in disguise. I was worried about you. But at the you. time, I fucking hated you. I was worried about you. I was like, this guy, oh my God. And then... Um, but now you know that it's a for the, it was for the better. Everything happens for a reason, I believe, in my books. But, um, yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm sorry for making... Thank you for inv- the invite. Let me let me let me let me let me let me, let me, let me, let me, let me twenty backtrack. minute dance around about you not oh, living in my backtrack, fucking let me house. Let me backtrack. Let me backtrack. Let me backtrack. You me can't backtrack. live in the house. It's fine. No, I won't live in the house. Let me backtrack. Yeah. Thank you so much for the invite. Uh, no problem. Although I find your um, place neatly kept and mysterious, 
in not in the best ways. Mm-hmm. I really appreciate your hospitality. Okay. I had a very delicious meal at your the table that's never been used before. It's get, it used every day. Just okay. gets cleaned. Just uh-huh. get, it just gets cleaned. Uh huh. And um, we have a Rudy in our a, house. Not a ding. Not, not a, a ding. ding. Who's dinging up tables? What are you hitting a table with? Do you put a plate down like this? Then, well, no, you see, you know, this you, is yeah, my yeah, food yeah, plate. Okay, I want to say this. Do you ever see? Do you ever see Lord of the Rings? No, you know I've never seen one of them. Okay, so or Game of Thrones. Never seen one of them. Okay, so I'm gonna teach you something. When Vikings, right? Mm-hmm. When Vikings, my people. When, exactly. It's not your people because you don't know how to ding a table. So when Vikings, <laughs> when when they when they go to a village and they uh-huh. hoard, right? Yeah. Or they they're victorious in a battle. Right. Right. They always make it to some sort of hall. Yeah, a celebration. A hall. A celebration hall, right? And the king stands up and we now hear this. We are victorious, right? Yeah. And everyone stands up and they go clunk 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 with their little cantinas, right? Yeah. And they fuck on the table. They eat fucking meat off the bone, uh-huh. right? The leg bone, right? Yeah. And they go, oh, Vladimir, come over here, or whatever their name is, right? Yeah. Flunkar, come over here. And yeah. then they fucking they'll do a wrestle and they use their tables because they're full of life. And they're full of um, expression, and they're full of artistic energy. Is that what you do on your table? Yes, we do, and we're so very you, you, celebratory at okay. our table. Okay. And and you're this is a you, mm-hmm. right? Um, honey, dinner time. This is let me well, just. I say, ring the bell. Ring, ding ding. Ring ling 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 ling. Dinner time, right? And then she comes up with some sort of a roast. Mm-hmm. Right with herbs in it. You, bet, is it, you guys uh, love your herbs. Thyme, thyme, yeah, 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 thyme, thyme and rosemary. You love your herbs. Thyme right? and rosemary. You bring it to the table, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, you go, dark meat or white meat, honey? Ew, dark meat. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and then you, you know, somebody probably slices it with nice utensils. Yeah. Brightly puts it on the thing. Yeah. And if let me say something, if a piece of meat goes onto the table. It becomes a nine one one freak out Karen emergency. Yeah. Hello, police. Yeah. <laughs> There's a piece of roast juice right. that dripped on my table. Right. And I bet you money you guys do this. Mm-hmm. Right. You probably go. You know, honey, I'll do the dishes tonight. <laughs> do you do that? Uh, uh, we do. I just we both do it. Kind of. We both share the. Mm, it's an unspoken. No, Sometimes I man. do. I leave the shit on the table. Oh, you make you make the do women else do it. Do I? I leave the shit on the table. Mm-hmm. And I don't even look at it anymore. Yeah. I just, it's like as if it's like I throw the fucking a napkin down and I just, I all push the fucking plate away from my body. Yeah. And I'll just turn my body and I'll just leave. Yeah. You know That's, what I mean? Uh... And then all I hear is clink, 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 and then they're cleaning it. Right. And the whole time they're going, this fucking piece of shit. I yeah, can't wait I'm to a man. Kill him. I'm going to fucking I'm a real kill guy. Him. Oh, you're a real man? Yeah, I just said it. Oh, you're, so a real man just leaves someone else to clean up their bullshit? That's what a little boy does. A little bitch boy goes, clean up after me. I'm not grown up enough to clean up. <laughs> That's what a bitch boy does. Yeah. A man cleans up. I do sometimes. <laughs> no, you fucking I never don't. Do it. When is the last time I he never cleaned? I never do it. I never do it. Has he I ever cleaned? Do. Um, He tried last week, but then when I saw the plates, it was still dirty. <laughs> you scrubbed and didn't really clean them. You just put water you, on them? You, don't, oh, you don't. wonderful girl, you. <laughs> Thank you so much for saying that. Hey, do your, do, your, do your dogs freak out over the fireworks for real? Yeah, they we, don't freak out. They just... I bought my dog. We had to buy my dog a... Um, Earmuffs? Uh, no, we bought her a... Uh, it's called a thunder blanket. Do you know what that is? I think so. Thunder blanket? It, yeah. It kind of like... It, it cr- cr- hugs them so they don't have crazy anxiety because the fireworks... Are fucking insane how many people are lighting off fireworks in LA. And it's every night we go for a walk. Boom, 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 boom. But they're saying that the, the government is. I read conspiracy this. Conspiracy theories. I that read The government's this. doing it so to the, get us conditioned to, to bang noises. Yeah. I don't think this. that's. Re- do you believe that? I do. You do? Yeah. Because I, I want to look up the story because I read that same thing that, um, uh, uh, you know, this, this, this says the government is doing this to get us used to, um, what is it called? Not martial law, you know, where they, where they, where they, like militant, uh, where militant force. Look at this: large-scale firework displays into the evening, a week before the protest. Still now, the middle of June, and every night, they're still going on. But you know what's so crazy about this? I uh, uh, conspiracy theorists are fun, I guess, and they're you know, they're goofy people. Most of them turn out to be real. Flat Earth, real. <laughs> I know they proved it this year. I know. They well, I went it. to the edge. You have you've been to the edge? I've been to the edge, dude, of the of the earth. What does it what does it look like? 
what happens is I was in the ocean uh-huh. and I was in a, a, my ferry boat. Oh, you you, know, I own a ferry boat. Your new one. The new one that I have, yeah, yeah. the yeah. other one's bad. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, Jules been out there with me, right, Jules? Two, yeah, two. Yeah, see? Two, and, two. Uh, the song that we sing is the Rorosha song. Oh. Rosha, Rosha, Rosha <laughs> boat. It's my ferry boat. Yeah. That's our favorite. It's a fairy boat. boat. Right. So you got to the we edge. Wrote, we got to the edge, and it's like Truman Show. It just drops off? Oh. No, there's a wall. Oh, shit. It's there's like a... a wall. Oh, my God. Right. And you, what happens is the, the my ferry boat, right, hit the wall, and I looked at Jules. I goes, I guess, back to L.A. That was you found out the end. Yeah, we found the end. You didn't want to, like, figure out if there was a door or anything outside no, of it no, like no, he does no, in Truman Show? No, no, no. That's it? But um, is that true, Jules? Did you see the edge of the Earth? Did was it beautiful at all, or no? It was plain. It was plain, much like yeah. my it, house. Just like your plain uh, house, and also because guess what? Uh, honestly, you're living in my house. I know, but on um, honestly, yeah, I'm so proud of her. Why? Because two times during this podcast already, yeah, she pulled the mic herself. Not only that, mm. she agreed. <laughs> right. She she normally would go no we didn't go on a boat, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. But now she's she's getting to play along. Yeah. I, honestly, I'm about to cry right now. Don't Bob, don't cry. Yeah, I'm so proud of her, dude. That's that's that dude. That right there is like a gun instinct instinctual thing that she got learned from you. Not just didn't learn. She just by being on podcast. I think she learned just to add information or to agree. Right. I never taught her the rules of improv. Right, they just. They but twice just, she already did that. Yeah, yeah. You're getting, you're getting. You're good. Really She's, getting good. Rudy's gonna have her own podcast. Is gonna supersede this one. Are you getting more famous online now? By the way, she has like fourteen thousand followers. Really? Yeah, on her Instagram. Isn't that funny that that's more than like certain people that we know? I know. <laughs> like comics who are like, like trying real to real big comics. Yeah, who are trying to do it for a living. I know, and she doesn't care. She put posted one photo of the dogs. No, she yeah. put there. There's a photo of the dogs. No, I'm I gonna saw show it. you this photo. No, she did. <laughs> no, just be, shut up. Just give me a second, okay? Should we bring it up? Bring it up here. Wait a minute. What? She? Oh, oh, oh. Go to oh. Bad Rudy. Go to Bad Ruby, Rudy. Yeah, bad and then Ru- I'll show you the photo that she she put up. The this one, one before this that. One? The, the, yeah, the, yeah, this one? Yeah, yeah, This one? Look look at this. Ooh, la, la. Look, look, don't blush. This is... Oh, my gosh. Look at this one. And so Rudy posted this. And this is called... Uh, this is called, Hey, It's Me, It's Rudy, Pay Attention to Me. That's what the title of this is. Mm. Hey, it's me. It's Rudy. Pay attention to me. Rudy. And Rudy. Rudy. What are you trying to say here, young lady? What are you trying to say there? <laughs> what are you trying to say she here, goes, young she lady? She goes from no posts, right, right? To like, you know, look at me. I'm right. a peacock. Look at me. I'm a peacock. For people that can't see, if you're listening, Rudy is uh, trying to do one of those L.A. model girl's faces. <laughs> And the face looks like you, you, you're either, you saw something in the distance and you're scared or, you, or you're yeah. almost about to fart. That's no. just pre-fart. No, no, no. She looks emotional there. Look. Yeah. The sunset is so beautiful. The Listen. sunset is so beautiful <laughs> that I'm about to, on the verge of crying. That's what, look at that. So beautiful, sunset, so beautiful. verge of prime. Yeah. I'm yeah. the verge of prime. Or, or, or she's thinking, you know what I mean? Is that Harry Styles coming toward me? <laughs> she loves Harry Styles. So, Rudy, tell us the, what is the, what's the... What's the vibe behind this? What was the reasoning uh, of all this? Um, I think Alila helped me with a thirst trap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So this is. So she said. You said. Did you say I want to do a thirst trap for the internet? No, I think Alila. She did. Gave yeah. me an idea. Bad influence. But you know why? Bad influence. You know why? Yeah, why? I'm not gonna say his name. Hmm. Did we talk about it last week? I don't know. Uh, about the guy in school. No. There's a boy that you like? Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay, so, and I know who, I, I had known her, his Instagram and whatnot. Okay, we're not going to say his name. You've checked him out. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is he I cute? Is he cute? Him. You know, he looks like a young, weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Curly hair? Curly hair, but also just, you can tell that he's a funny guy. He looks like a young Jewish guy. He does a bit in his uh, Instagram where he goes, he just runs into a locker. He like jumps into a locker and falls on the ground. Yeah, you know, and and so it's fun. Is he funny? To me, it was funny. He's cute. Yeah, and you really like this. Well, guy. Well, what happened was, um, Rudy. I don't want to embarrass her, but well, um, you, we're already there. She <laughs> she started following him, and uh. he never followed her back. <gasps> 
Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Right? Who the fuck does this and kid he wants think to be he is? An actor. And he doesn't follow you? And he's he doesn't an follow actor, you? He's an actor. And doesn't right, follow Rudy? And wants to pursue, right? And he doesn't realize that Rudy here- Is more famous than him. Is more famous than him. Yeah. Yeah, which is insane to me. You still like him now? So even I wanted didn't... to fucking, so I go to the girls, I go, oh, that's it, I'm following him. And so... I'm going to send him a direct message. <laughs> follow my fucking niece back. Did you do this it? Is, no, but they're like, don't do it. Yeah, that's embar- that's it's a little, embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. But also, yeah. I kind of want you to do it. I, know. <laughs> I want to do it too. I want to do it too. But do you do you have you had run-ins with him in this over the summer now? Have you when school is done? Have you talked? No. Yeah. But um, we talked once. Tell him the, how the tell him the. Uh, tell me. Yeah, and I'm so disappointed in her reaction. So what go, happened? Go, go ahead. Um, we were in class, U.S. history, and then he said something about um, what are you doing for the project. And then I started coughing, and then I couldn't talk. <laughs> you got no, nervous? So, uh, Did you just, get so nervous that you yeah, started coughing? Yeah, yeah. So let me, uh, yeah. So, um, Jules, what are you doing for the class? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what you did. You just got tightened up, and then did you say anything? Or no, that's it? Um, I forgot. <laughs> she blacked out. She blacked it out? She fucking went into a black hole, yeah, in her mind. Do you think now he thinks you're a weirdo? No, that you said uh, that he laughed yeah, when he you did laughed. that. Oh, okay. He thought it was cute. So he gets it. Yeah. She probably blushed, coughed, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then blacked out. And he went, oh, weird. <laughs> you're- Filipinos are weird. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, what I wanted to tell her is, is that... Chinese girls are weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to know his name so bad, I'm not going to say his yeah, name. Yeah, no, I, know. I know. I mean, what, what I would love to do is just to be... Listen, okay? <laughs> what I would love to do is get in contact with him. I wish we could call him on the show. I know, me too. I wish we could do that because you're not... He, is, he graduated already, right? Yeah. So you're oh. never going to see him again. Oh, he's going to college. Yeah. He's going uh. to college, right? You're never going to see him again. What school is he going to? Do you know? No. You're never going to... You're not going to... And, and it's also... I'm going to be honest with you. I know for a fact, right, that one day that you're going to meet somebody so much better, much more better than that guy. Yeah. Right? But I also want to be mindful and know that she is a teenager. Mm-hmm. And teenagers get crushes. Honey, hey. we all shop online, right? And we've all seen that promo code feel taunt us at checkout. That's right. It says, oh, do you have a promo code? Do you want to save some money? And you're like, I don't. But guess what? Honey got you covered, baby. Yeah, it does. Honey is an incredible aggregate that gives you all of those promo codes collectively together in one site so you can save a ton of money. You're going to save so much money, guys, on this thing. It's so stupid. It's so simple. All, when you check out, the honey button drops down. All you need to do is click apply coupons. You just say, yes, give me the it discount. Sc- it scans its database for of all working coupons for that site. Yeah. It's, honey it's, saved it's me like money machine. multiple like times. I just ordered a bunch of stuff because I wanted uh, some new digs for the, the summertime. Drop for sure. Yeah, they do. And I wanted to order some new swimming trunkies, which I did. Yeah. And... Honey gave me a drop-down code, and I saved 15%. It was kind of nice. Yeah. Uh, they found 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. Uh, they have 30,000 stores online. So if someone's like, they're not going to have what I shop. Yeah, they will. Yeah. They have all the stuff that you're looking like, for. Like, I'll give you an example. If, like, if you want toe gloves. Toe gloves. If you're looking for toe gloves. Yeah, 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 toe gloves. And, and you can, Honey's and, got and, you. And honey will give you a disc, like f- find the best price for toe gloves. That's right. If you don't already have Honey, you could straight up be missing out on free money. It's literally free. Installs in seconds. It's a no-brainer. By getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid supporting this podcast. So support us, man. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash. Bad friends. That's joinhoney.com slash. Bad friends. Yep. Babble. Annyeonghaseyo. You know how I want to know Why? what that says? Why? Because I'm interested in using Babbel. Learning a new language is on your to-do list, yeah, my ba- friends. You know, usually uh, learning a new language, they say when you're past nine years old, it's very difficult. Is that what they new- say? I don't know. I just made that up. But my okay. point is, is that it is very difficult. But the thing is, with Babbel, it's so easy. It is you easy. Can, you l- learn a new language in a new... New it, type of way. It, Ten to fifteen minute lessons. They teach you real life conversations, so you can. You're not just going to get cuss words like you uh, like you do from the streets. You can actually be able to ask more than just "Where's the bathroom?" Uh, you're not learning words and phrases out of context. You learn through you learn through interactive dialogues. It's it's it works because it's built around real life how people actually communicate and what they care about. Yeah, and there's fourteen different languages: Spanish, French, Italian, German. Uh, speak rec- recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and accent. Babbel is available on an app. 
Get it on your phone you or online. You can learn Spanish, French, Italian, and German. And German. Whatever you want, That's man. Not- right now, Babbel is offering our <laughs> listeners three months free. All right? You want to learn the language during the pandy? You got nothing going on. Uh, three months for free with the purchase of the three-month subscription. All you need to do is German. <laughs> Enter the promo code. Bad friends. Go to babble.com. Use the promo code. Bad On friends. your three month subscription. That's B A B B E L dot com. Promo code Bad Friends. Babble, it's language for life. I had many crushes in school. Right? You, do you remember your first crush? Oh my God, I had so many of them. But, but who? But did never... one that stood out the most? Oh God. I can give you. I can give you the first time I realized that I liked that I liked girls. Like you know the moment as a young boy when like you know there's always this joke is like young you super young boys are like. Yeah, we, we want to go kiss a girl. It's like, shut up, dude. Fucking yeah. Yeah. And at one point, I was I was with my dad, and we were picking up my cousin from her birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese. Uh-huh. And I we walked in, and I was waiting for my dad to get my cousin and my aunt. And I look over, and dude, I it's as vivid today as it's ever been. It was prob she was prob I was probably you know whatever <laughs> yeah. t- ten or eleven or whatever. Yeah. yeah. She was a Mexican girl. She had to have been 16, 17. She was a high school girl, I could tell. And I was this and young you, little nerd. And she was did with. Did you think about her at nights? She, yes. Dude, she was with her little sister, who was yeah. probably around my age. Yeah. Right? And I look over and I saw this tall girl. She was really tall and had this like beautiful, dark skin. And she looked down at me and she smiled. And I swear to God, my brain was like, I like those things. I, <laughs> I don't know what it was. <laughs> I, I, I do. I like it those just, things. It, whatever it was, it clicked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it, it just became this like so dark dark you know that like dark skin dark hair yeah she was so pretty and her smile looked down at me and you know when I was a kid I probably thought she was forty but she probably was sixteen and I because oh I was ten God. you know I when know. you see older kids you're like <laughs> yeah what are you forty eight you know yeah. and they're like I'm twenty and you're like oh whoa what are you what do you own a bank you know you have no but that was my first moment of of like didn't have a crush on her but I realized I was like oh man I like those things do you mi- I, I, there's parts of me that misses that young love. When you when, when you, you like cru- when you oh yeah when you get a crush so hard that yeah. it's just it consumes your mind yeah twenty four hours a day well and you get nervous all the time to talk to him I re- remember like um the first <laughs> I got a, I got set up on a date with this girl uh, our friends were like you guys need to you guys need to be a couple you need to be a couple in junior high um, I can't say her name she was uh, the first black girl I've ever dated mm. and she was the last because they hit too hard but she was. <laughs> But our friend set us up. Our mutual friend set us up. Uh-huh. And then they would call me together. And it made me so nervous yeah. to talk to her with our other friend listening. Because yeah. I knew the whole time you're like, don't sound stupid. Don't sound stupid. Don't sound oh stupid. My God, and you're yeah. trying to be cute. Like, you remember being on the phone with somebody until like 2, 3 in the morning? 4, oh four my 5 in the morning? God. You just stay on the phone all night until you fell asleep? You don't I- do that. Dude, you guys don't do that stuff, do you? No, because they have text and fucking Instagram and shit. Yeah. Because for me, when I was 23, I was still had that high school thing because I never got girls, right? Yeah. So then I remember one time I met this girl and then I opened for Carlos Mencia in San Antonio. Mm-hmm. And I remember him yelling at me because I used the condo's phone from after the show till nine in the morning. <laughs> and the condo was next to his so he could hear me. The whole night. And the whole night, I'm just like, yeah, so what are you eating? <laughs> You know what I mean? Oh yeah, that oh I love those. Yeah. Avocado. Young love. Right. It's young love. One time I'm gonna tell you this story. This is so sad. So I, w- w- I was a waiter at this restaurant. Which one? It's called the Brockton Villa. Ooh, in San Diego? In La Jolla. That's very nice. I know what I know what that is. It's on the cove. Yeah. And um I worked there for years and there was this girl that I had the biggest crush on. In fact, I hung out with her every day for about a year. In fact, as a friend, well, I did she I, know? No, she didn't know. Oh, Bob! But I had this big crush on her. Uh-huh. In fact, I would go to this coffee shop on my off days because one time I saw her there. Yeah, just and I would stay there all day, <laughs> just so in case? in case. And then if I did, well, she never came in there again. Right. But just in case, if I did run into her, I'd be like, "Oh, what are you doing here? Oh, you do you like coffee? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah." So one night. And this is a year. Every day, I would either call her or hang out with her. I would ask for shifts that she was working because she was mm, right. Yeah. So one day, I go. She was supposed to hang out with me, and I go, um, "What are you doing?" And she goes, "I know we were supposed to hang out, but I'm sick." Oh no, you're not. 
I go, oh, you're sick? Okay, cool. So then my other friend goes, there's this party. So I go to the party, and then some girl came up to me. She goes, oh, are you here with so-and-so? She's here. Oh, no. Right? I go, she is? No. She had lied. Oh, no. And right. she's with someone else? Yes. And I'm looking all over the party for her. Oh. It gets worse. <laughs> so then I hear she's in this bedroom. No. Upstairs. Yeah. I'm not kidding you. And then you instinctively are like, she must be taking a nap at the party. Yeah, yeah. She might be tired. So I walked in. Why would you do that? And she's hooking up with this guy. Yeah, obviously. So I close the door. Do you say anything? No. You just walk in and go. Mm. She saw me though. Yeah. She goes, what are you doing? And you go, I close these, are these are really nice. Bathroom. These are good doors. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And I remember going out in back of the party and I punched a tree 50 times. Because <laughs> you were just so angry and so hurt. Yeah. And she ended up marrying that guy. Oh, well, then it's worth they it. They have kids. Oh, that's worth it then. Yeah. Did they name, they should have named one of their kids Lee. No, but I remember. That hurts a I lot. I remember still, even after Matt TV, because uh-huh. they moved to San Francisco. And yeah. she would. She, she doesn't. Live, she lives like an outside, an hour outside of San Francisco. Mm-hmm. I remember playing the room there, and then she would always drive. You know what I mean? With her husband? No, by herself. Huh. To come have lunch with me. That's really sweet. Yeah, she's sweet. That's really nice. Yeah. So it started off bad, but it ended really nice. I. You know, I, it, it, it was because that event happened right before I did stand up. Yeah. And I b- believe that that event drove me into doing stand up. Really? Yeah. There was a couple things. I was kicked out of a band, yeah, called Last and Superb. We've seen. We love your band, Last and Superb. And then that had happened, and then also I had no money and I had no future. I remember sitting, at, looking at my bank account. It said like seventy six cents, and I remember just going, oh, "I gotta call my parents for rent. I have no money." Ugh. And then I remember going, "I have to do something drastic, or this is the, the life I'm going to live." Yeah. Just struggling. Yeah, and so without, and then I'm never gonna meet anybody. Oh God! So, all those feelings so of all doom. those feelings of doom. I was 22 years old, and you were scared. I was scared, and then at 23, I walked by the comedy store in La Jolla. What's her name? The first name? Anna. Anna. Thank you, Anna. So, thank you, Anna. And I walked by the comedy store, and the help wanted sign, and I, I knocked on the door. That's incredible. That's how it worked for you. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you an embarrassing story that doesn't end so sweet. Tell me. My first year in college, yeah. <laughs> a girl a girl two doors down, mm. who I became friends with. We all became friends later. But I had such a crush on her. I thought she was so cool. She was so cool, dude. And she was pretty, and she was nice, and she was athletic. First name. I give you mine. Carrie. Okay. <sighs> <laughs> it's just she was so cool. Yeah, yeah. And I was nervous. I know. And I stupidly, stupidly yeah. wrote a note one night. And slid it under. Stop laughing, Rudy. I wrote a note. I know it's so lame. I wrote a note and I slid it under her dorm door. Okay. Did it have a question? Yes or no? No. Questions? No. It basically okay, was like, I just want to let you know, you know, I think you're so cool and oh. I'd love to hang out sometime. And oh. I was so <laughs> nervous. And she never ever told me that she got the note. We never, ever talked about oh, it. Oh, how embarrassing. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, poor Andrew. We became friends. But did you ever walk by her? We became really close. So basically... But was... after that, she actually dated another friend of ours. Right. But after that, it was like in the past at some point, we all became cool on our floor and hung out. It was real embarrassing. Yeah, it's... You know what that... It was Those, are, those pretend it didn't happen moments. Yeah. Oh, I didn't get your note. Yeah. She probably got it and goes, I have to... For me to... In order for me to move on in life, yeah. I had to either accept this as reality or pretend it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happened. I, but this for, didn't I happen. think, first of all, she showed it to all the other girls making fun of me. Right. She probably got all, all, right. <laughs> all the girls on the dorm floor. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah, like, yeah. you know what that stupid redheaded piece of shit loser you know said? Freak? You know the, the freak? The unfuckable? You know what the freak said to me? <laughs> yeah, that yeah. he thinks I'm cute. And they're like, ew! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know what I did to get back at some of the girls that were being mean to me uh, on the hall floor? Uh, a friend of ours worked at Spencer's Gifts. You know Spencer's Gifts in the mall? Yeah. And back then they used to sell sex toys too. I don't I don't even know if they do anymore. They don't. 
They did though. I know they did. Yeah, and so they used to sell sex toys, and we had a friend get us uh, a bunch of uh, sex toys. Yeah. So we got a bunch of big rubber dildos. Uh-huh. We used to throw them at people on campus from the bridge. Yeah. And at <laughs> night, you were a frat. Huh? Were you in a frat? No. Okay. At night. This was just me and my guy friends being idiots. But at night, one of the girls in the hall who was mean to me, who would it would end up being friends with a girl that I liked, she was just such a dick to me for no reason. She was doing laundry, and uh, laundry was the doors were wide open, so you could hear the laundry through the halls. If it, even if at night it'd be a quiet the dryer, I threw a bunch of dildos in the dryer <laughs> and turned it on. Yeah, yeah. So for five minutes until everyone woke up. Yeah, and she opened it up and she's like, "What the." There was like five dildos inside of her laundry. <laughs> and then we all, I walked yeah. out like, what's going on? Who yeah. would do that? That's nuts. <laughs> well, so, people, well, you know what guys don't realize? You know how like some people, guys, you know, like, you know, will snap. I don't get any pussy. And they'll snap and they'll and just kill, shoot up and a they'll mall. And they'll kill a school. Shoot up a mall. Yeah. What, th- what these guys don't realize is we, none of us got any. Yeah. When you're, when you, yeah, yeah. Just, I, I think that's a part of growing up is these frustrations of... Love loss or you not being att- you, you getting attention from women. You don't go shoot up a women. school. You don't, no. You just get on the internet and feverishly masturbate hoping that your college roommate doesn't come home. Yeah. Did you ever, I had those scare. you you didn't really go to a, a college, so like you never oh, had that. fuck you. Well, no, you didn't. I didn't. But I had worries all the time of timing if my roommate was like going out. I knew I could masturbate. And he'd be like, hey, I'm going to go to the gym for a while. And I'm like, how long's a while? He's like, yeah. oh, like an hour. I'm like, okay. And like the moment he's gone, it's like. But I didn't, no, but I did live in my early 20s with Six guys in San Diego and in a three-bedroom apartment. Oh, two guys to a room? No, people lived on the living room. It was, oh, it, it just was, you know, spread out everywhere. Yeah, right. Yeah. And that we lived with a Christian. Okay. With a man, with, with a man of God. He was, he, he was not only just a man, devout, born-again Christian. Oh, so he was... Did Red-headed he... guy. Not, uh, no offense. No offense taken. <laughs> and um, Alex. And then I remember one time coming home from work, and he's crying on the couch. And I go, what's the matter? And in his hand was one of my Hustler magazines. Oh, you pervert. I know. And I go, and he gets up and he goes, how dare you lay these things around so that I can sin? And I go, what These happened? pages are he, all stuck together. He goes, I've been masturbating all day. <laughs> right? And he, he, he was also a guy. This is, and he blamed me for like, sinning. You made him masturbate. Right. I just left it like right out in the open, in the bathroom or something. Oh, that yeah. He goes, How dare you? I right? can't poop without getting a boner. This piece of shit too would get Sunny Delight. Love Sunny D. Sunny D is delicious. So good. And I couldn't afford Sunny Delight. That's how poor I was. Yeah. And but I was so I was steal his Sunny Delight. <laughs> and he <laughs> came up to me. Was excuse me. Um, I'm, I work very hard, and um, you know I've been saving my money to get the Sunny Delight. And I go, yeah. He goes, and I would really appreciate it that if you um not drink out of my Sunny Delight, and and uh, for me to uh, now figure out, uh, and, and I have a system now. See this line. So he would take a black marker and mark every time he had a drink. Mark, he would drink and mark it. Idiot. Idiot, right? <laughs> yeah. Because what I would do <laughs> is fill it with water. <laughs> so eventually, it was just water. <laughs> This piece of shit. He still doesn't want to believe it, too. He's just yeah. like, the Sunny Delight tastes watery, but it's still my Sunny Delight. <laughs> yeah. we. Li- I lived in a house. I, li- I had a, when I first moved out here, Yeah. I lived in a two-bedroom, one bath, and it was three of us sharing one bathroom. Yeah. I lived in an uh, old uh, dining room, a partitioned-off dining room. But my most fun Too Many Guys house was my second year in college. We all lived together, and we were. It, our house was a constant revolving door of just people coming and going and partying and hanging out. And there were no rules. People could just do whatever they wanted. That's how kind of all of those houses were in college. Yeah. <laughs> and one of my buddies, this was great. We got kicked out of a party because one of, one guy in our group was trying to got into an argument or a fight uh, with s- some dude, right? <laughs> yeah. And my buddy says, my buddy says, all right, let's get the fuck out of here before something crazy happens. <laughs> yeah. We leave. We get in the car, and we're all fucking we're all shit faced. By the way, yeah. bad. Should no drinking and driving is bad. Our driver was sober. I bet. But he goes, fuck those guys. I go, yeah, it's fucking it sucks. We always party over there. That sucks. And he goes, I got him good. I was like, what did you do? And he just holds up an eight ball, a, a pool ball. He goes, I stole their eight ball from their pool table. <laughs> I was like, why? What, what are we going to He goes, you know how hard it is to buy one single pool ball? And all those fucking idiots are going to buy a whole new ball pool ball set. <laughs> <laughs> really? That was his revenge. And were you like, 
I was like, were you laughing? Or you, no, we were like, cool. I was like, that's cool. But what, what? I think that's pretty cool. I go, well, who made you think of that? And he yeah. goes, I just saw it. And I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll fucking take from them. I'm going to take a pool ball from them. That's, a, that's pretty cool. They're never, they're never, they're never going to know where it went. <laughs> <laughs> this is the same guy. This is my, my old college roommate who the same guy. He was so, so depressed. Yeah. Uh, he's going to listen to this. He was so depressed that he failed math for like the nth teenth time. And we were at a party. And he was sitting with his butt on the floor and his back against the couch. And he had a handle of Jack Daniels mm -hmm. sitting in his lap. <laughs> uh -huh. And I go, come on, man. You, you're being really weird, man. You can't do this kind of stuff at a party. Like, people are going to be fucking freaked out that, like, this weirdo is blacked out by himself. I was like, get up. You either got to go home or you got to party with us. Yeah. And he, no shit, he just goes, oh. And I go, are you going to throw up? And he goes, oh. And he looks up in the sky. <laughs> And yeah. he, blah, fountain throws up, like two, three feet in the sky. Yeah, yeah. Blah, but yeah. I respect him. He held his shirt out and he caught it in his shirt. I'm not kidding. <laughs> yeah. I have witnesses. Yeah. Blah, in yeah. his shirt. And he, and he, go, he goes, but take me outside. Yeah. And I have to pick him up and he's wiping puke off <laughs> yeah. of his shirt. And I go, you, are you going to go home? He goes, I think it's time. I think it's time to go home. This guy was a, he was, a, he was a, the best guy to party with, but also yeah. uh, uh, like you. Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen? Right. Who knows where it's going to go? I have a friend named Nathan. I swear to God, mm -hmm. he was in the Blue Man Group. Shut up. I swear to God. Like the, because they, they, the Blue Man Group, wasn't. it's not always the same guy. I know. There's a million of there's them. There's a million of them, right? Yeah. But he was an alcoholic, Nathan, right? And my friend Kalisto tell, told me, and Kalisto. Nathan backed it up. Mm -hmm. You know my friend Kalisto? Yeah. Yeah. So um, Nathan was completely drunk in Vegas doing the Blue Man Group, mm -hmm. and he was a blackout drunk, right? And he vomited into his drums, but then he had to fucking <laughs> and splattered into his face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The colors are getting out of that drum yeah. is insane. Speaking of my friend Kalisto, so me, my, my friend Kalisto and I lived in Silver Lake. We had we we every day we'd go. There was an El Pollo Loco across the street, mm. and we would buy a B um, BRC burrito. What is that? Bean rice and cheese burrito. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And we would split it in half, and that was our meal. They're a dollar. That was all you could afford. That's all we could afford for the day. Yeah. Wow. And we would have just thinking back these arguments like like over the phone bill. You know how you would get enraged. Oh yeah. He'd just be like, "We live in Silver Lake. Who calls Santa Monica? <laughs> <laughs> right? What? Are you like what? <laughs> I'm not paying the seventy six cents. <laughs> like those kind of arguments when you're so poor. Yeah. Now it'd be like, oh, I don't get. You know, you don't even look at it. The seventy six cents. Well, there is no phone bill anymore. It's like I know a, it that doesn't exist before cell phones. When you're the arguments of when you're so poor. Oh, like the arguments when you're so. Broke. My first roommate. My first roommate ripped up the carpet in our house when I first moved here. Yeah. And I and I came home. I said, "What the fuck are you doing?" Yeah. He goes, "There's wood floors under here, man." <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? We have to pay for that shit. And he's like, I know. We'll just tell the landlord there's wood floors, man. And I was like, yeah, dude, we fucking, you ripped up the carpet, asshole. <laughs> yeah, and he was yeah. just like, well, I don't know what to do. And I was like, I'm not paying a fucking security deposit. I get all mine back. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you. I'm not paying you get any of that shit. crazy arguments when you're poor. Yeah, because you're so nervous that it's going to collapse you. I mean, I, 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 I had panic attacks that they were going to come get my car. My first car that I had yeah. that, that I was leasing, yeah. I was so nervous that I wasn't going to pay the bills that I thought because I'd seen or heard of those things where they repo your car and they come just take it from you, even if your shit's in it. They're like, oh it's my, ours. I know. So I used to have panic attacks in the middle of the night that one because I didn't pay a bill and I was like, they're going to just take my fucking car and I'll, then I won't be able to get to my shitty job to make my shitty rent and then they'll kick me out of this place. I used to have those tumbling thoughts every night, every single night. I had emotional feelings toward objects because of the experiences yeah because they meant so much i i'm not even kidding you i had a white so when i moved to la i had a white toyota truck and i you know my friend jonathan gossick who was an he was a comic mm -hmm. uh, who i started with he asked him there were no windows in the truck in the cab they were all blown out <laughs> <laughs> There are no windows. Yeah. <laughs> Ask them. <laughs> so you yeah. would be in the winter driving down, you know what I mean? No windows. The 405. <laughs> You'd be so cold. Just imagine the wind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I remember I would park at LAX mm -hmm. to go on the road, and I'd come back, right? <laughs> and I remember one time I came back, and there was a one of those locks on the – wheels oh oh they booted I, you I, I they booted, booted you I yeah. money yeah and i couldn't pay it no i'm not kidding you 
I walked up to the truck. I put my hand on the hood. And I weeped like as if somebody had died. Because somebody did die. Because I would never see that truck again. Oh, did you never see it again? No. Oh, Bob. Because I had to let it go. I couldn't get it back. So I remember going... Thank you. Like, I remember saying things to it. Like, thank you so much for Tijuana when we went to Tijuana. Or, like, all those. Other, remember we got in that car accident? We got away with it. When we hit that guy, we killed him, and no one knows but you yeah, and me? Yeah, yeah, And And I, I remember just so many experiences in that truck. Yeah, but it means so it much. It means, and when you're poor, it means so much to you. Yeah. Yeah. It's Well, and you know what? What? Honestly? Yeah. That's why my table at my house doesn't have any nicks in it. You want me to bring the story around? That's exactly why. Because I had so little of anything that now You've never I appreciate yeah, the What fuck. my story was is going through real life experiences no with an object, right? I understand. You bought this bullshit thing from Ikea. I don't, I didn't, right? you just Ikea. threw it in your house. No, you don't not. give a fuck about I it. I picked that table very, very delicately. Oh yeah? What experiences? Oh, we had meals here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had nice conversations there. When the pandy broke out, I cried over Italy. If I walked to, went to your house, I go here. How much was that? Uh, well, let's just say, let's just suppose that was three grand. The dinner table? Yeah, it wasn't three thousand dollars. A thousand, whatever it might no, be. No, what is wrong $600. with you? Six hundred dollars. It was like twenty grand. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't know. I don't even remember what it right, was. Right. If I gave you the twenty grand and I took a fucking, you know, it wasn't twenty fucking grand. Whatever it was, and I took a fucking chainsaw. Now here's twenty grand, and I fucking couldn't have you. Would not cry. No, if you gave me 20 grand, that's so stupid. I could buy 10 new tables. Happy, Happy America. Happy America. America, the greatest country in the world. Be blessed. God loves Love you. It. I'm the best. Thank, Thank you, you for, for being, being a bad, bad friend. friend. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs>